Okay, this lecture is on scientific notation. Now, before you begin, make sure that you have a calculator close by and make sure that you also have your objective sheet out so you're aware of what you should be able to do by the end of this video. So scientific notation. Scientific notation is a way for us to write numbers that are too large or they're too small for us to write conveniently in decimal form. So in just science in general, we, we deal with a lot of very, very large numbers, very, very small numbers. So things we'll be dealing with in here, we'll be dealing with the speed of light, we'll be dealing with the size of molecules, we'll be dealing with molar mass later on. These are numbers that are very, very large or very, very small. And what scientific notation allows us to do is write it in a shorter form, but it also decreases our room for error. So what I mean by that is if you, someone was supposed to write you a check for $10,000 and they left off a zero, so now you only got a check for $1,000, it's kind of a big deal, right? So what this is, it reduces our error and it makes it more convenient for us to write. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite large and small numbers by moving our decimal point and we're going to add exponents. All right, so we're dealing with decimals, we're dealing with exponents. So what we're going to do with the decimal is we're going to move that decimal point so only one digit of the numbers 1 through 9 is in front of the decimal. Okay, so I'm going to show you an example. It'll make sense in just a second. But what you really need to remember is you can only have one digit in front of your decimal, and it has to be a digit 1 through 9. The next part is about the exponents. Your exponents are going to represent the number of spaces that your decimal place is going to move. So we're going to be moving our decimal place to the left and to the right, kind of like you do when you're doing metric conversions, but what I want you to remember is that the exponent does not equal the number of zeros on a number. So, does not equal the number of zeros on the number. Okay, so don't get it confused with how many zeros are at the end because you're going to see that situation is not always going to match up. So exponents represent the number of spaces your decimal gets moved. So let's do a few examples here. So the first thing that you have to do when you're writing a number from a big long number like this one up here is you have to locate your decimal point. Very first thing you should do. So our decimal point on this super, super long number down here at the end. Now if you go back to those rules I was just saying, you want to move your decimal point either to the left or to the right so you have a single digit, one through nine, in front of that decimal. So we have to move towards a digit that's one through nine, which means we're gonna have to move our decimal to the left. So I'm gonna move it one space, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight. Now my decimal point is right here, so I can rewrite this as 7.0 times 10 to the eighth. Easy enough. So see how that eight does not represent the number of zeros, because then it would be one, two, three, four, five, or six, seven, eight. It does in this case, okay? But now look down at our next example. It's not always going to match up. Okay, so don't rely on that as being your way to remember. Your exponent is your number of spaces. So now let's look at this number. Also a really big number. I don't want to write out all those zeros. You don't want to write out all those zeros. So let's find an easier way. Find your decimal. And now we're going to move again. We're going to move it to the left because we need a digit 1 through 9. One, two, three, four, five, six. A lot of the times I see people want to stop here because they're like, oh, there's my one through nine digit. 
Yes, we need a digit one through nine. But if you remember the other part of that rule, we can only have one digit in front of that decimal. Right now we have three, okay? So we have to keep moving until we only have one digit there. So let's go back, let's recount so we don't lose spot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Also, a times 10 to the eighth, 7.56 times 10 to the eighth. So this is your example of when your zeros don't match up. One, two, three, four, five, six zeros. It's an eight, but we did move our decimal point eight spaces. Okay? Now these look a little bit different because now we have very, very little numbers where our decimal is on the left of our number. So remember, same rule applies here. We're looking for a single digit one through nine to be to the left of our decimal. So it's a little easier to find your decimal point here, but we'll highlight it again. Find that decimal, and now we're gonna count our spaces. One, two, three, four. 6.12, but watch what I'm gonna do here, times 10 to the negative fourth, okay? Because we have a small number, it is a negative exponent. Same thing down here, second example, try and find that decimal. One, two, three, four. 4.106 times 10 to the negative fourth. Okay, so what you're going to notice here, negative exponents, so those negative fours, do not mean that we have a negative number. Okay, do not get a negative exponent confused with a negative number. What you want to remember about your exponents is a positive exponent equals a large number. So those first two examples that we did, both of them had a positive exponent. Those were very, very big numbers. Negative exponent equals a small number. Okay. So any way you can think to remember that, maybe it's if you got a check for a large number, you would have a positive attitude. If you got a check for a small number, you would have a negative attitude. Any way you can think to remember that, just make sure that you're keeping those two things straight. All right, so what I want you to do here is Try these few problems on your own. I'm, I'll put the answers up in just a second. Pause the video, restart it once you're ready to check your answers, take your time. Um, this zero right here is just a placeholder. It's just to help reinforce the fact that this is a actually a decimal point. So it's the same way as writing it like this without that zero in front but I will write that zero out in front so you're always aware that that is where the decimal point is located. So go ahead, pause the video, and we'll check your answers in just a second here. All right, so your answers are in these purple boxes below, so hopefully you got those correct. If not, go ahead and watch the beginning part of this video again, or we can go over them when you are in class. So the other thing is you should be able to go the other way. So if I give you something in scientific notation, you should also be able to write it in the drawn out or the standard form. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to write it the other way. Now, what you need to remember is that positive exponents give you a large number, negative exponents are gonna give you a small number. So here I have a positive exponent which means that my number should be big. The only way for me to make this a big number is to move my decimal to the right. I'm gonna move it three spots. So that's one, two, three. So my decimal is now here, which means my number is 
A way for you just to check yourself if you get yourself confused about which direction to move your decimal is move it both ways and see what it gives you. So if I moved it to the left, I'd have one, two, three. What you're going to do in that case is fill in those blank spots with a zero. So I'd be left with point zero zero four seven one zero. Okay, so which one of these is a large number? It's this one right here. So just double check yourself and make sure that you're moving the right direction. But if you can keep straight that your large numbers are going to be positive exponents, small numbers are negative exponents, then you're going to be just fine. So this, we're at a negative 4, which means we want a small number. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4. So we're at point zero 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 seven one zero two. All right? Positive, big, negative, little. All right, you may also be asked to add or subtract something when scientific notation. And the key with adding and subtracting is to make sure that your exponents are the same. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use rules that you've used in math class anytime that you've dealt with exponents. When you're adding something, your exponents must be the same. So if we have something like 3.76 times 10 to the 5th and we're adding it to... 4.21 times 10 to the 5th. My exponents are the same, 10 to the 5th and 10 to the 5th. So all I have to do here is add my base to my base. So 3.76, 4.21, let's add these together, 797. And then I just add on my exponent because it is the same. Okay, but probably not going to be as easy as that because you all probably know already your exponents are not always going to be the same. Like in this situation, I have 7.58 times 10 to the 5th plus 2.871 times 10 to the 6th. Now, not the same exponent, 10 to the 5th, 10 to the 6th. So what you may be tempted to do is just change your exponent. 7.58 times, times 10 to the 6th. But what you have to remember is that changes the value of that number because you are adding an extra digit at the end. You're adding an extra zero. So that goes back to that check thing we talked about in the beginning. So now you're probably thinking, well, how do I change the numbers? How do I change the them both to be either 10 to the 5th or 10 to the 6th. Well, what I find to be one of the one way to do this is to write these numbers out, okay? You're going to get used to it, but once when you're getting started, this is a good way to do this. To write 7.58 times 10 to the 5th out, I have to move my decimal place 5 spots. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, now let's say I want to make this number because that's our number into a 10 to the 6. That means I am going to move my decimal point 6 spots. So it is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 0 0.758 times 10 to the 6th. See how that's the same number? This is the same value as this. That's the key here is you cannot change the value of your numbers. So we're going to use this as 7.58 times 10 to the 5th. We're going to make it as a 0 0.758 times 10 to the 6th. So now our exponents are the same. Eight, 
7, 1 times 10 to the 6th. So now we just have to add these numbers up. 2.871 plus 0.758, 9, that's 12, carry the 1, 16, carry the 1, 3.629 times 10 to the 6th, all right? So subtraction is the same thing, only here you're subtracting instead of adding. So you're going to subtract your numbers instead. We added them here. You subtract them instead. You just got to make sure that your exponent values are the same. So next we have multiplying and dividing. So you're going to use your exponent rules here as well. So when you multiply... You add your exponents, and when you divide, you subtract your exponent. All that stuff you do in math class come into good use here. So whenever you're multiplying, you're going to add your exponents. When you're dividing, you're going to subtract, which this means that your, um, your exponents are not the same. You do not have to change them because you're going to be doing stuff with those exponent numbers. All right, so let's do an example here. Let's say we have 6.2 times 10 to the negative fourth times 7.4 times 10 to the 6th. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to deal with our bases first. So I'm just going to multiply these numbers together. 6.2, 7.4, 4 times 2 is 8, 6 times 4 is 24, drop down with my 0, 14, carry the 1, 6 times 7 is 42, 43, 8, 8, 5, 4, 2 spots after my decimal, 45 point, did I do that right? 45.88, yes. So that's where my base comes from, okay? That's where that came from. Now, let's take a look at our exponents. We have 10 to the negative 4th and we have 10 to the 6th. So what did we say the page before this? We said you're going to or you're going to add your exponents when you're multiplying. So negative 4 plus positive 6 equals 2. So this is your new exponent, okay? Now you're going to write it out with your base. 45.88 times 10 to the second. So here's your base, or your exponent, and here's your base. Something looks wrong here, though. Think about that very first, very first rule that we talked about was we can only have one digit here. So I have to move this over one more spot, which is going to make it 4.588 times 10 to the third. So it didn't change the value, just changed what it looked like. All right, so let's do a division one here. 2.4 times 10 to the negative fourth divided by 4.8 times 10 to the sixth. Let's deal with these first. 2.4 divided by 4.8 is going to give me, that is one half, 0 0.5, okay? So that is my base on this, and now I'm going to deal with my exponents, 10 to the negative fourth and 10 to the sixth. Now, remember what we said at the beginning there is you're going to subtract your exponents now. So we have a negative 4 
minus 6, which equals negative 10. So we have 0 0.5 times 10 to the negative 10. So this, this came from here and went down here. And then this came from here. But once again, this looks wrong. We need that digit to be 1 through 9. So I'm going to drag this over here to make this 5.0 times 10 to the negative 9. All right, so after you have watched this video and you have your calculator, bring it to class the next day that you're in class because um, I want to show you how to type in scientific notation in your calculator the correct way. There are multiple ways and there are a few ways where it makes things a little bit more difficult and there is a way, there is an easiest way. Okay, so just bring that calculator to class and we, I will go over that with you depending on what each of your calculators looks like. All right, so go ahead, work on your practice problems and good luck.